Uh, no, it's, uh, it is not good news at all. Um, as you rightly pointed out, uh, the aircraft are now being grounded, and uh, although it's a temporary grounding pending um, the solution being uh, agreed upon by the FAA, certainly in the U.S., uh, it's not at all what Boeing would need at this point of the early years of the uh, aircraft service life. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, it's not uh, very unusual, is it, for uh, aviation regulators in various countries to order uh, checks whenever there's a suspicion of a safety flaw. But uh, this does seem quite serious. I understand it's to do with these batteries, and that's one of the selling points of the Dreamliner, isn't it, that the batteries uh, supply a lot of the internal power to the aircraft, much more than in uh, other types of aeroplanes? Um. Right, yes. The, uh, the 787 is a more electric, the world's first more electric aircraft, which means that uh, the vast majority of its systems and, uh, and its entire systems architecture, in fact, is based more on electric systems rather than the conventional pneumatic and hydraulic systems of today. So uh, that is a big part of the aircraft's b uh, baseline efficiency. Uh, which is why it's a, you know its electric architecture is fundamental to the principles upon which it was designed. Um, so that's another reason why um, this is a very very important um, you know moment for the program because uh, it's basically questioning one of the uh, part of the fundamental design assumptions of the aircraft. So it has to be corrected. Now, much excitement, of course, awaited uh, the Dreamliner. Uh, it uh, was seen, as, as some people have said, as uh, something of the future of aviation. Lots of uh, composite materials, lots of plastic, very lightweight, very eco-friendly. That's how Boeing sold it. And lots of glossy ads announcing its, its arrival. But it's only actually been in service about a year. But the obvious question would be, uh, why have these problems all emerged now? Right, well... It's a, there's a couple of reasons, really. Uh, one is the, the fleet size um, had increased, uh, has increased to 50 aircraft in service. And uh, that means that statistically you are starting to um, build up the number of incident, incidents in which, uh, you know, frankly, teething troubles do start to, to emerge just because it's statistically more probable. Um, but the... Uh, but, of course, the element that has taken everybody by surprise is the, the battery fires, which are not what you would normally describe as a teething trouble at all. This is a far more serious incident. And, of course, that's why the uh, FAA has now taken this action like it has done, which, you know, of course, hasn't been done um, in any similar way since about 1979. Um, obviously, uh, the prospect of a fire on uh, any kind of aircraft is uh, uh, undesirable in the, uh, at, at the least, we should say. But um, it seems, from what I understand, these lithium-ion batteries, one of the problems with them is that they produce oxygen when they start burning. So potentially almost impossible to put out if you were in flight. Uh, yeah, that is part of the... Um, that's, that's, that is true. They, um, they are a sort of a self... Uh, self-fueling fire if you if you see what I mean and uh, very difficult and Boeing themselves say you know it's once this thermal runaway um, phenomena as it's called kicks in uh, essentially the only thing you can let let it do is burn itself out um, so Boeing's main priority was to build a sort of like defensive architecture around it build multiple la layers of protection that would prevent anything like that ever starting. Uh, and I think that's really the fundamental focus at the moment of the investigation, is to find out why none of these protective systems, or at least in these two cases, seem to have been penetrated. And secondly, why didn't, none of, why didn't any of this crop up during the years of testing that they did before it entered service?